This is one of the coolest projects I've seen, but also one of the strangest projects I've ever seen. Hello, my friends, and how are you doing? This is for everybody who wants the functionality of ComfUI but hates ComfUI because it is too complex, and then this might be your jam. Also, here, this time, my rap at the start of the video. This is how it goes. If they see my stuff, they say, who could this be? I turn the head like it is a frisbee. Never seen a cream that is quite so crispy. Sit down, because we are about to write history. Let's get started, my friends. All right, so I am talking about Flora, which has the domain Flora Fauna AI. And this is an intelligent canvas, as you can see here. But I want to show you how it works, because that is genuinely creative and very easy. So this is how that can look. And before you say, whoa, that already looks complex. No, it is not, because each of these boxes is just the generation you want to have. There is no extra boxes of connecting stuff together that is complex to create just one function, because there is just three boxes. Let me show you. When I zoom in and I double click, I get only the choice of three nodes. That is it. So we have a text node, an image node, and a video node. But here's the interesting thing. Let's click on a text node here. As you can see here from the list, this can do multiple things. And at the top, you can see this is using ChatGPT 4.0 Mini or alternatively Claude 3 Sonnet. So you can choose between these two models, which means that this is not just a text input, but it is also an LLM. What that means is you can, for example, down here, write a text prompt and say you want to generate something as a text or you can interrogate an image. So for example, here you have an input. If you load an image in, you can ask to have a prompt created for that image, or you can ask for the colors in that image, or you can ask to list the things in that image. And then you can send this out to another node, maybe another text node, where you say, use these elements to create a prompt from that, or you want to create an image from that, or you want to create a video from that. The same thing is true for when we have here the image node. So you can see again here, you can do multiple things. For example, you can upload an image. So this is just for loading the image. You can combine images into a video, multiple images. That is, you can turn an image into a video or you can ask questions about the image, which also means you can have the text output right from here. So you don't even have to have the text node to interrogate an image. That already is pretty cool. But of course, I also told you you have a video node. And again, as you can see here, you can do multiple things. You can use it as an input for a video. You can use it for video generation from a text. You can use it for video generation from an image. And other things, as you can see, you can also interrogate a video to have a description of what is happening in the video and then use that to send it forward, maybe as a prompt or anything you want. This can be super powerful. Now, before we go on, I want to show you a little bit more about the functions that you have with each individual node. For example, here we have an image node. On the top, you can see different icons. For example, here we have the ratio. There is not an unlimited amount and there is not a free amount of ratio. So you have here these choices. Let's say we choose 16 by 9 and it will adjust to that. You can also have style LORAs here. So you click on that and you can see you have here a selection of different styles you can use, but these are fixed styles in that case. Here, when you have multiple of these nodes, you can also arrange it with that button. And in this case, because we have an image node, you can also select between different image models, for example, Flux Dev, Flux Pro 1.1, Luma Photo. And of course, you can also use this with the different image nodes to test between of these different models. Now on the top right, you can also see that here we have additional information, for example, the quality. Now this also has an impact for when you have an input 
image on how strongly that input image is regarded by the AI and then you also have here the same things you have seen before like the style the model and the size below that you also have here the seat one more thing that might be super interesting for you is that at the top of the block you have here learn about the image block so when you click on that this will bring you right to the help page where everything is described for you including the models including the different modes that you can use here so all of that is pretty interesting and helpful it's also very easy because the blocks don't have many functions even though you can do a lot with these blocks and last but not least, if you right click on a selected node, you get here the choice to copy, paste, duplicate and delete that node. Now, here's a quick remark about the navigation. When you hold your control key and use the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. When you only right click, you can drag the canvas around. And when you only use the mouse wheel without pressing any key, you can scroll in the canvas up and down. Now here, I want to show you an interesting function that I've built. So here I say I want to have different ideas for a cinematic street scene at different daylight situations in a Victorian London for a movie scene concept art. And as you can see, it generates for me five different ideas. In the second text box here, I say merge all input ideas into one prompt to have a combination of all of them. And in the third node, I say create three variations of the prompt that has been created here in the second node. Now, up here, you can see I have another text node where I say select prompt one from the list of three prompts here from the input. And then I send this to an image generation here. This is the scene I get from that. Now here in the second node, I say select the second prompt as an input and generate an image from that. As you can see, it is surprising similar. So here is a variation of what you can do. Let's zoom out and then you can see I have here lines going down to this box here where I say select the first prompt from the original list and then enhance that prompt. So this could be another technique. As you can see up here from this list, we have here morning mist enveloping cobblestone street, but the second one is midday sunlight illuminating a bustling market. So these are a lot more different. And because I request here that this is going to be enhanced, we still get a nice long prompt. And this is the result. As you can see, it's a beautiful cinematic scene that I can use for a scene in London. And I sent this to have a video generated for me. Now, the first video is generated by Runway. And as you can see, it didn't really understand what is going on here because all of the characters are kind of walking backwards. However, here we have the Kling 1.6 version and that is fantastically beautiful. All of the characters walk in the right direction actually looks like a movie scene really beautiful so this can be used for example to create a storyboard including first simple scenes that you can use for your movie that can be super powerful but i want to show you something else you can do with this technique so as you can remember the second prompt was for a market scene and i also wanted it to be enhanced so we have this longer prompt here and that is generating this image here, which is already pretty beautiful. But then I use this image as an input for the second note. Now in the second note, as you can see, I not only use the image input, I also say make a night version of the input image. And as you can see here, it actually did that. It has a very similar composition, even though the characters changed a little bit. And it is a complete night scene of that first scene. Here you have both scenes in comparison. The people are standing in the same places. We have the same perspective, but now it is a night scene, even though subtle details changed all over the image. However, if you want to, you can also go a different route. So here I have the original prompt 
as an input for a new text node and I say make a night version of the input. So it rewrites the prompt into a night version and generates a completely new image. This has also worked even though this has a completely different composition. Now here I want to show you something else you can do to create additional variations because when you mouse over you have here a number it says one. Now this is not the enlargement of the image the upscaling this is the amount of variations you can automatically create. So when I click on this I have one two three four or as many variations I want to have and when I click here on generate this will actually spawn four more of these image areas that will then render these images again for me in variations and that can of course be super helpful. Now if you ask yourself why would you want to have all of this complexity just to run each of these nodes once well you can actually run them more than once. Here is the thing you can select an area that you want to run again you see here I select all of the nodes that are on the right side of my initial node and up here now I have a play button when I click this this is going to run all of the nodes. So this is different from ConfUI here you have to select which of the nodes you want to run again this is not for running all of the nodes again which of course you can also do by selecting all of the nodes but the concept here is to keep some of the parts because this is a canvas where you can work and create concepts different design variations so this is more built around having a mood board or a storyboard you want to create but of course you can still do that which can be super useful for example if you save this complete combination of notes as a workflow for your next project and here's actually another huge benefit of this page because up here you have a share button. Now the share button has two functions. You can either publicly share it to the community or you can share it as a link. As you can see here in the preview you will also see the other people working on your project. So if you have a customer or if you have a team if you have any kind of collaborators you can send them the link and they can work with you you on this project which is super useful. And there is another thing that is really good for collaboration. On the left side here you have a button for comments. Now with these comments you click on the icon and this will turn your mouse into a comment button. The use for that is that you want to comment on different parts of the workflow. So for example I can click here and I can leave a comment and say very nice but make it anime. I hit enter and you can see now I have a remark here with my personal icon here for my account and then I have the note here and you can click here to resolve the comment so that the problem is solved and you can go on working with your team on other problems. Now one more thing that might be interesting to use the sidebar on the left which is also very useful. First of all here you have a plus this plus is for generating more of these nodes then below that you have here the assets the assets is everything you've uploaded to the website below that you have all of your generations these are the generations from all of your different projects so when I scroll down here you can see here these cat images from a different project and below that you have here the flows or workflows you can search through them so you can load complete flows into the canvas here so you don't have to recreate it every time from scratch. Now let's talk a little bit about the pricing here which is somewhat transparent because when we click here you can see I have in this case 65,000 credits you can turn this to USD so you see this is $65 so if you are calculating in dollars it's actually easy to understand how much money you spent from the credits and you can also top up here your credits by buying additional credits you can see here add credits if you run out so the credits are somewhat unlinked from your subscription but if you have the free subscription where you can also add credits you have limited access to the other functions for example for uploading assets but also for how many projects you can create in here. When we go to the pricing page it starts as low as $16 per month for the 
professional tier here which allows for 50 projects and also you have a 10,000 credit rollover per month so if you don't use these credits they roll over to the next month they're not lost which is also pretty nice now one thing I want to point out here is that for example for the video generation with Kling 1.6 I found that this is more expensive than for example on replicate or fall AI however you have here this additional functionality which of course also has its price it is not just the generation it's also the integration that makes the price here so that might be okay in this case now of course you can build something very similar in ComfUI but there are two big differences one difference is ComfUI is way more complex in the way that you have to connect the nodes, save the models and install everything and also one of the other differences is you don't have this kind of collaboration mode with other people which becomes increasingly more important the more you work on complex AI art projects. But you have to decide if this is right for you. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye.